Samsung's folding phone is as great as ever, but if you already own one, there aren't many reasons to upgrade. When you unfold the device and feel the quality of the hinge, you can tell that Samsung has spent years perfecting the feel of the phone. While I wouldn't say it's a life-changing improvement, removing the possibility of debris making its way between the folded piece of glass is great. Plus, the closed design brings the Z Fold 5 in line with other foldables like the Google Pixel Fold and Motorola Razr Plus 2023. These changes don't sound like much of an improvement, but the moment I picked up the Galaxy Fold 5, I noticed the weight difference immediately. One of the biggest complaints with foldables is that they tend to be heavy, so the closer Samsung gets to the weight of its traditional flagship phones like the Galaxy S23 Ultra, the better they'll feel. Minor refinements and improvements aside, I want to touch on Samsung's unchanging design of the Z Fold 5. The device's overall footprint hasn't changed much in five generations, you still get an extremely slim front display and an almost square internal screen. Samsung did experiment with other aspect ratios, but they ultimately decided to stick with the old tried and true. The biggest issue with the narrow and tall design has to do with using the phone one-handed. Of course, Samsung allows you to swipe down in the middle of the screen to get to your notifications, but some quick settings are still locked to the top of the device. While I didn't mind the internal display's aspect ratio, even though you'll always be stuck with black bars when watching videos, I'm really hoping Samsung tries at least widening the Galaxy Fold 6 cover screen. Another problem I encountered half had to do with the design and half the software. With the fingerprint sensor embedded in the power button on the phone's right side, it was easy to unlock the device with my right thumb. Ideally, you could also use your left index finger if you plan to hold the foldable in your left hand. This would be easy enough except Samsung requires the Fold 5 to be unfolded when registering fingerprints. Despite my best efforts, I could very rarely get the phone to unlock with my left index finger. The angle that I registered my biometrics with the Fold 5 fully unfolded must be just different enough that it doesn't like my prints when the foldable is closed. I understand Samsung didn't want to or maybe couldn't include an in-display fingerprint sensor in both of the device's screens. It doesn't stop me from longing for a rear fingerprint sensor or true biometric facial recognition like Apple's Face ID. There's really nothing to complain about with either of these screens. Before moving forward, let's talk about our today's sponsor, which is Banks. You no longer need to place your phone away from everything, just witness the dance of keys, coins, and chaos, futilely attempting to scratch the unscratchable. Banks has just released an armorer case for Galaxy Z Fold 5 built with 600D Kevlar fiber with a better grip and also feels comfortable in the hand. It is five times stronger than steel. Kevlar has the innate advantage for protection. It gives you a near caseless look and feel, while protecting it from daily wear and tear and even have raised bezels to protect the camera lenses. They're handled by skilled craftsmen, precision form to fit your Z Fold 5, then laser cut to perfection. These are easy to put on, easy to take off. This time they have upgraded it with 600 denier with more delicate surface texture and improved grip, reducing the chance of dropping your device. This great tool of aramid fiber easily leveling up your everyday style. Do check out the link in the description, and if you apply the code DEMONTEC15, you'll get a 15% instant discount on your product. So coming back to topic. Gaming was also fantastic on the internal screen as you have much more real estate to work with than a traditional smartphone. Of course, I can't review a foldable phone without talking about the obvious. It's crease. You've most likely heard this before, but you stop noticing the line going down the internal screen within minutes of using the handset. Looking head-on with the device fully unfolded and the screen on, it's nearly impossible to see. Sure, your finger will run over the diva, but it won't interrupt or ruin the experience of using the Z Fold 5. Just be prepared for onlookers to comment on the abnormality when looking at the phone from the side. They will be much more noticeable to them. Love it or hate it, Samsung continues to develop One UI, its custom skin that runs on top of Android 13. A couple of years ago, I probably would have gone on a rant about how much I hated all of the tweaks and changes Samsung makes to stock Android. But these days, One UI is rather tame. I still dislike the duplicate apps and never-ending settings menu, but I wouldn't say Samsung has gone overboard. Samsung software has also gotten really good at handling foldable phones, it's one of the many advantages that comes with building five generations of Galaxy Z Folds. For example, the Fold 5 handles multitasking like a champ. Unfolded, you can get four apps running at once. While I never did this outside of testing, on more than one occasion I did run three. Powering the Galaxy Fold 5 is Qualcomm's top-of-the-line Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform for Galaxy. You'll also find 12 gigs of RAM. Combined, you have one powerhouse of a smartphone. Throw any task at the foldable, it'll chew it up and spit it out. While I didn't test DeX, Samsung's desktop mode, I'm sure the handset would have worked just fine as a portable computer. 
The issue with having multiple screens, especially one as large as 7.6 inches, is that those pixels take a lot of electricity to power. At the beginning of this review, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get a full day of battery life out of the Galaxy Fold 5. Let's say I stopped worrying after day one. On an average day with the Z Fold 5, I spend a good amount of time scrolling through social media apps like Twitter, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok, read news and artifact, send text messages, and maybe watch a video or two on YouTube. With that type of usage, I was getting over 5 hours of screen on time and between 10 and 12 hours of screen off time. I was never worried about running out of juice. Unfortunately, the Fold 5 cameras haven't changed much compared to last year's Z Fold 4. As such, I can only describe the photos taken on the foldable as good enough. Looking through the photos I took, I found most scenes to look a bit soft and in darker areas, the blacks tended to be crushed. HDR and color reproduction are nailed in almost every case, but I'd expect more from a phone with this price tag. Additionally, with the ultra-wide camera, you're going to see some distortion around the edges. The fisheye look isn't necessarily bad, just something to keep in mind. The Fold 5's OK camera quality carries over to video capture. Although all three sensors do a great job of capturing the overall atmosphere, you can see small artifacts as you zoom in and the picture just isn't as sharp as I would have liked. If you're looking for an Android phone specifically for its camera, I'd recommend checking out the Google Pixel 7 Pro or the Galaxy S23 Ultra. The whole punch camera on the cover display is probably the best if you need a quick selfie. It's not the sharpest, but it'll get you by in a pinch. The underdisplay camera is by far the weakest of the five. As it's shooting through the screen with pixels disabled, you have to expect a certain level of fuzziness. It's like you're trying to take a photo through a window covered in smudges. I wouldn't recommend snapping selfies with this camera, but it's good enough for a Zoom or Google Meet video call. Up until rather recently, Samsung has basically held a monopoly on foldable phones in the US, but several months ago, Google entered the area with the Pixel Fold. Coming in at an identical price and similar specs, some serious competition finally exists. The passport-sized front screen is much more comfortable to hold and type on, and when unfolded, the wider display is great for watching movies and reading Kindle books. Obviously, everyone has their preference for phone size, but if Samsung doesn't find a middle ground between where it is with the Z Fold 5 and the Pixel Fold, I hope it introduces a third foldable that does. Of course, if the large phone that turns into a tablet design isn't for you, you can always check out the other foldable Samsung announced, the Galaxy Z Flip 5. Of the two South Korean-made devices, the Flip 5 saw significantly more changes year over year. Its new 3.4-inch cover display is much more useful, and you won't need to flip the phone open to accomplish basic tasks. If you're in the market for a folding phone, the Galaxy Z Fold 5 is an easy recommendation. Samsung has taken what it has learned from the four previous Z Fold handsets and continues to perfect this device. Between the quality of the hinge and build materials, you start to forget about the somewhat fragile nature of the ultra-thin glass covering the internal display. But if you're not looking to spend $1,800 and want something smaller, everything great about the Z Fold 5 can now be found in the Galaxy Z Flip 5. It feels just as premium, but in a more pocketable form factor. So how do you like the latest Galaxy Fold 5 from Samsung? If you got yours, then share your thoughts below in the comment section. See you in the next one. Peace out.